i starten. Hej allesammans så hjärtligt välkommen till Nordens Ark och ännu en Facebook Live. Eh, idag är vi i detta vackra värdet uppe hos våra järvar och ska prata med en forskare som är här från USA, eh, Alaska, som jobbar med järvar och som har varit här nu i en vecka eh, och gjort ett spännande projekt med våra järvar. Så för att göra det så kommer jag nu ändra till engelska, så so I'm switching to English now <coughs> to introduce Tom. Uh, to everybody who's following us. So, Tom, do you mind just presenting yourself for our followers here at Facebook Live? Yeah, so my name is Tom Glass. I'm a, a PhD student at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, and I'm coordinating the Arctic Wolverine Ecology Project with the Wildlife Conservation Society, also based in Fairbanks. Uh, so we've been studying wolverines on the north slope of Alaska for the last few years here, and are now uh, at Norton's Ark here this week to yeah. kind of into our project there so exciting so uh, your project in Alaska on the Wolverines what are your kind of what's the project about yeah well uh, it's it's <coughs> pretty broad our goals are really to um, just are starting with just getting some basic biological information about the species uh, in northern Alaska so you know we, we really don't know very much about Wolverines uh, in the state of Alaska in general, and especially in this Arctic tundra ecosystem, so the project is based on the North Slope, um, which is this treeless environment, um, relatively barren, and there haven't been any focused research projects looking at wolverines in that kind of landscape before. Um, so we're trying to learn as much as we can uh, about just, you know, basic things like population density and, and habitat associations, you know, why do the wolverines choose to live where they do, um, why do they choose to den where they do. Uh, and then we're trying to get into kind of more fine scale questions to things to do with uh, behavior and how they uh, how their different behaviors change depending on the habitats they're mm -hmm. in, things like this. So okay. uh, it's it's fairly broad, um, but uh, but trying to you know provide as much information as we can to managers in that landscape. All right. Yeah. So to find out all of these questions, get the answers. How do you how do you work with the wolverines in Alaska? Yeah. Well, so. <clears throat> Originally, the project uh, started in 2014 with aerial surveys. So we had uh, two small planes, fixed wing, um, they're called Super Cubs, just a two-person two plane yeah. that flew uh, across the landscape, this big uh, expanse of northern Alaska, and looked for tracks. And so that was, the purpose of that was just to generate these, um, an occupancy survey, just to mm -hmm. get a sense of where the wolverines are on the landscape. Um, and that lasted two years, and then we transitioned into this uh, collaring effort that's been going on for the last three years, since 2016. So mm -hmm. we've been um, out in the field every spring, riding uh, snow machines around and capturing wolverines and putting GPS collars on them. Um, and so it's this that's kind of the represents the shift into getting into these more fine scale. Uh, behavioral based questions and looking at the fine scale habitat selection, things All like right. that. So when you say driving around on snowmobiles and catching wolverines, how do you actually do that? <laughs> yeah, so we have these uh, box traps. They're, they're made out of uh, commercial lumber, you know, like these uh, pieces about like this. Yeah. And we, um, uh, you know, constructed them back in town and brought them, drag them, put them on a sled and pull them out onto the tundra. and. Um, put a stinky piece of bait in the back of them basically and the wolverine goes in and um, yeah then we're able to put the collar on and, and track it around for the next couple months. All right. So how many for this study now, how many wolverines have you captured? In uh, we've caught 24 different wolverines in the last three years. All right. That's a lot of information then. Yeah, yeah. hopefully, yeah it's good. All right. yeah. So uh, I know you have a collar here, maybe yeah. you could just show it and explain how it works? Yeah, so uh, this is this is one of the collars that we just uh, had out on one of the wolverines here at Norton's Ark, and um, it's very similar to the collars that we put out on the wild wolverines in Alaska. Um, so this has three different instruments on it. So uh, this top one is just the GPS, so it's just like a handheld GPS that you would walk around with. Um, in this case, on these wolverines here, it was taking a location once per second, so basically continuously for the last uh, 10 days here. Uh, the collars that we put out on the wolverines in Alaska, it takes a location every 40 minutes, uh, mm -hmm. so it lasts a lot longer. And then this is a light and temperature logger, <clears throat> so it just records, it records the ambient light levels once per minute and the ambient temperature levels uh, once every five minutes. And the idea with this is just to uh, one of the things that I'm interested in on this project is looking at how wolverines use 
uh, snow, cavities in the snow for protection from predators and, and they raise their young in snow and they um, cache food in snow. So they go in, in and out of these snow holes a lot over the mm -hmm. course of their life on, in northern Alaska. Mm -hmm. And the light and temperature signal changes, right, when they go in and come out oh, of the yeah. hole. So this provides one way to see how they're using snow. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, this is the accelerometer. And so this measures the, the acceleration of the animal uh, while it's wearing the collar in uh, three dimensions, so X, Y, and Z dimension at a, at a really high rate. So in this case, it measures it 10 times per second, 10 hertz. Um, and that's the purpose of uh, my, my visit here at Norton's Ark is, to, uh, is primarily to put these accelerometers on these animals. Um, so the idea with these is that you can, w once you get those data, this really um, high fixed rate acceleration data, uh, you can tell, you can distinguish the behaviors of the animal that's wearing the device, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, each uh, behavior that the animal uh, uh, exhibits, you know, when it's running or it's walking or it's digging or it's eating, each of those has a different uh, unique signature in the data that the accelerometer records, right? So yeah. um, the idea is that once I uh, have those data in hand, I'm able to um, say what these wild wolverines are um, doing, uh, you know, at a very fine scale over the course of their days. Um, but in order to do that, the key part of that, and why I'm here at Norton's Ark today uh, and this week, is to uh, is that you need to actually directly observe the animals while they're wearing the accelerometers um, to to link those data with those behaviors before yeah. you can apply that to the wild animals. So. Which I guess is quite difficult. That's why you're here. It's difficult to do in the wild because yeah. they are quite elusive. And, yeah, because yeah. you can't just stand around and observe them for hours at on, on no. end in, in the wild. But uh, that's. Uh, much easier to do here. So, yeah. 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 So you had colors on three individuals here at Norden's Ark. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen anything while observing our wolverines? Have you seen anything that kind of uh, amazed you? Or <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's been it's been a real pleasure to get to spend. You know, I've spent nine days, I guess, now uh, observing them every day for uh, you know seven or eight hours, mm -hmm. and it's yeah, it's just been a joy to. <laughs> watch them run around and uh, kind of just live their daily lives. You know, I spent a lot of time now following their tracks around uh, in the woods and on the tundra and trying to piece together their lives. But so this has been a, um, yeah, just a great experience to actually get to observe them directly. And I mean, the thing that strikes me the most is just how um, curious and bold they are uh, yeah. and how much they uh, are, are just kind of intrigued by the world around them, I think, and how much they like to kind of play with the things that they encounter in their yeah. world. So. Yeah. so how come you chosen to work with the Wolverines? Is there a specific reason or? Um, oh, that's a good question. I mean, <laughs> the reasons that I just gave, you know, I yeah. think that they're really fascinating animals. Uh, you know, for a, for a carnivore of its size, we know relatively little about its biology. Yeah. Um, uh, and, you know, especially in, in places like the tundra, you know, we're still trying to piece together these things that, uh, you know, it's, are, are really ba basic, you know, mm -hmm. um, these things like population density and, you know, things that are uh, really important for effective management of them, but that yeah. we don't have a good grasp on yet. So I think that's one of the things that, that you know, kind of drives me to learn more about them yeah. uh, is to be able to manage them better. And uh, but then also, yeah, they're just really um, really great animals with yeah. great personalities, you know, and so. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the situation for the wolverine in the U.S., how is that? Are they doing well or are they decreasing, increasing? Or yeah, well, do, do you know? Yeah, um, it's, that's a tough question to answer because they're really tough species to study. So, yeah. uh, you know, in the lower 48, they're currently being considered for listing on the Endangered Species Act yeah. as a threatened and uh, primarily due to threats from climate change, you know, so they're, they're uh, snow associated species, right? Mm. So they raise their kits in snow in the spring. And so this earlier spring snow melt that we're seeing happen around the world um, is uh, due to climate change is, is likely to have some impact on them, right? Yeah. So, um, but it's really, hard to, it's really hard to go out and effectively monitor and get a good sense of, of how their population is doing, what kind of trends you yeah. see in their population, right? Just because yeah. they're so, uh, naturally low density mm. occurring on the landscape, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, that's uh, really interesting. And so now we're waiting. You got one color. Yeah. Uh, from the individuals come comes running here. Yeah. Uh, and we're waiting for two more to uh, fall off. So mm -hmm. could you just explain how the actual how yeah. we can make them 
fall yes. out. Yes, so this is, uh, this is called a drop-off mechanism, and it uh, was on the collar. I guess it's not going to go back on exactly the same, but, you know, it kind of pieced together like this. Uh, and then you can you program it before you put it on the animal, and uh, it has a timer built into it, and at a pre-programmed time, it, it pops off and releases from the animal. And so we use these on the wild wolverines that we collar as well to uh, retrieve the collar and also to make sure that the collar is not on longer than it needs to be. Uh, and we also, on those collars, usually um, cut them and, uh, and stitch them back together with just a piece of canvas mm -hmm. uh, as an added kind of security to make sure that the collar comes off the animal okay. eventually. Yeah. So when observing our wolverines here, did you see any discomfort behavior? From, I mean, it's, it's quite a big collar for the animal. Yeah, for so, an animal that yeah. size. I, you know, uh, all of them uh, kind of rub their neck into the snow. We just were watching one do it earlier yeah, here. Yeah, I think you can see it over there. Yeah, same, that kind <laughs> yeah. of, exactly. Yeah. So that's Edison, I think, who just had his collar off, and um, and he's obviously enjoying life without <laughs> the collar now. Uh, and all of them did that with the collar on, too. Uh, and then the uncollared ones that are in the enclosures with them also did it. So it's hard for me to say if that was discomfort, but I think they do. You know, they rub them a little on the ground, and they would rub them on trees. And, um, you know, it seems like they're trying to um, trying to get them off or just expressing a little bit of discomfort from yeah. them. Um, you know, I'm sure I wouldn't like to have a collar like this around my neck, no. you know, wake up one morning and have it. So <laughs> I'm sure um, I'm sure that they're, you know, a little bit uncomfortable yeah. by it. But we try to do everything we can to minimize that, right? Yeah. And I also, I mean, we put up a clip on Facebook where you can see them moving around. And yeah. They still seem fairly oh, yeah. okay with it. I mean, for the too. majority of their days, it yeah. seems like they just run around and live their lives as yeah. wolverines. You know, I don't, I don't think they're bothered by it in any serious way. No. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, thank you, Tom, for yeah. uh, taking time to talk to us and talk to our followers. And uh, we look forward to uh, reading your uh, um, article when yeah. it's published. It's going <laughs> to yeah. be very interesting to see. And uh, yeah. thank you all for listening and have a nice day.